You can't be living in the richest country in the world and be poor for 30 years mm. and still believe your poverty is the right thing. Like, we show you the gold. Sure. We show you the silver. Sure. We show you the platinum. Sure. We show you the, the agriculture. We show you, we show you, we show you, we show you. And then the moment you see them, you still turn around and say, ah, I'm a man. 350 right. My name is Harrison Mkize. Welcome back to another episode of Politics Alive right here on Engineer Your Life. And you guys know how I do it, right? So I always want to sit down with the young minds of South Africa and just, you know, see what's happening in the young people's minds. Today I'm hanging out with a 29-year-old man. He's actually 29 years old. He's doing incredible work. Umpo Dagada. I want to pronounce it correctly because me, I'm Zulu like that. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You are the president and the leader of um, Arise South Africa. Not only that, you're a podcaster, you're also an author and a businessman at the age of 29. Like, how did you do so many things, right? Only 29 years old. <laughs> I think, uh, firstly, I've, I've always had a passion for impacting lives. Got it. Um, so really, I've been really rooted in how do I impact as many lives as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my you know, biggest dreams is to know that at the end of my life, or once I've finished my life, um, I would have impacted Africa and changed Africa's future and changed what Africa's known for and what it's called mm. and what the world sees it for. So for me, it's always been about impacting Africa. And um, even where I am, I still feel that, you know, I've only impacted South Africa. There's so much more to be done. Got it. Um, and the time is short. So, so I'm always waking up every morning, remembering that to say that there is Africa to still fix. And that's so important. You come from Limpopo. Yes, I, 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 there's a beautiful story that you once told that you once told on an interview, of um, I think it's one of your family members owning um, an avocado farm and the amazing work that's happening there. What is it like growing up in Limpopo? I think Limpopo is a beautiful um, place. Um, you know, a lot of people like to call it the Garden of Eden, uh -huh. of which I agree, because everything grows: uh, mangoes, lychees, avocados. I always tell the story that when I came to Johannesburg. Um, and I was coming for my first year at UJ and I arrived in Auckland Park and I went to the spa um, in Auckland Park. It was in, in Milk Park. And I was going to buy an avocado because it was January and yes. you know, new avocados were there. And I saw an avocado for 20 rands. This was obviously a while back um, <laughs> while I was still uh, in first year. And for me, it was shocking to be like, how in Jobek they sell avocados? Avocado. <laughs> in, in Venda, we, we literally, you know, pick an avocado from the tree. Um, and, and it's always banter, like avocados are like a way of greeting, like, oh, I bought you some avocados. So for me, I, I really realized that what we've got in Limpopo is really um, something special. Mm. Every second house or every house has got an avocado, a lychee tree, a mango tree. Um, fruits and vegetables are not a thing that is expensive or a thing that people have to go far to look for. Mm. Everything grows. We, we literally feed the whole of South Africa and the world. Get it. Limpopo. And community, what's, what's the community vibe like? In Limpopo? I think, you know, for me, the community is very strong. Um, I always say to people that when you look at Limpopo and basically you look at, for example, certain things that happen in Joburg that just don't happen in, in Limpopo. In Limpopo, the moment if somebody snatches your weave, your phone, and somebody screams Vimba, right? Yes. Um, immediately, everybody goes and attacks that person and gets whatever was stolen back. You know, they, they don't just stand and look, you know. And I think the power of community is so strong there to the point where the community is well united. The community understands the things that are happening mm -hmm. and the community is always active. Um, you know, things like borrowing salt and things like when there's a funeral, you know, the whole community will come and cook. Yes. Um, or when there's an event, the whole community will come there. Um, and, 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 you know, community building mechanisms are there. I always say that a funeral in Limpopo usually takes a week. Yes. Um, every single day there are prayers, everybody goes to those prayers, um, there's scones that are eaten. Um, that it's, it's very much a very strong community building mechanism. And I think it's, it's served Limpopo quite well. And it's obviously served you very well, Definitely. because now you are um, a young politician as well. What's, yeah. what's that been like? You started in business and it was now normal business uh, politics. I think it's it's been very interesting. Yeah. Um, I think that the most shocking part has been finding out that politics in South Africa is funded by white families. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's been very shocking. Um, and I, I came in as somebody who, who was a bit naive to that fact. You know, I automatically thought, okay, 
it's politics, majority of this country, it's black people. We so, hope that he has into democracy. I'm sure that there's a lot of black people that are active in politics. Mm. Only to find that it's, it's a few families that, that made money during apartheid. They became billionaires and they continue to fund the politics of the day. Uh. And for me, it was very disappointing and disheartening to know that the same people that uh, were funded during apartheid are now funding democracy. Mm. Um, and a lot of times I've found that a lot of people have said to me that don't say this, don't say that. The funders of politics will not fund you. Mm. you know? And I've said, I've never lived my life like that. Uh. I've always lived for the truth. I've always known that the truth is the most important thing in this world. And the truth is the reason why this world exists. Yes. Um, so for me, it's always been important to say, I must speak the truth. I must let the truth know. But it's been very disappointing to realize that in politics, it seems that a lot of people go to these apartheid funders, mm. collect money and come and lie to the people. Um, and I find that it's, it's, it's a very dishonest um, process. So it's a process where people are saying things that someone else is controlling them to say. And people are basically protecting interests of a few families that are wealthy families and not the interest of the country. Mm. So it's been that realization to, to realize that we need more honest people in politics. Sure. We need to fix how politics is done in South Africa. And we also need to ensure that we fight for, for politics to truly be a representation of the people and not a representation of a few wealthy families in the country. Yeah, and speaking of, of, of the people in South Africa, I think you're, you're absolutely correct. Um, two things, black people, majority, and young people. And that's the voice that you come out as, as a politician. Um, what, do you, what, what do you perceive the life of a young South African to look like in this day and age? I think, firstly, um, access to the internet. That's mm. the most important thing. Got I've it. been fighting this for a very long time to say that. You look at MTN, you look at Vodacom, these businesses are owned by politicians, sure. proxies of politicians. Mm. And a lot of the times you find that the reason why internet access in this country is so limited is because they make so much money from it and they don't want to stop. And as a result of that, internet has become a thing that is non-existent in this country. Sure. I always say to people that we're very sometimes we're very oblivious to how things work. Like, for example, um, we're shooting this podcast that's going to be on YouTube. Yes. Majority of the young people in this country will never get to see this podcast. Uh, not because it's not good, not because they don't want to hear because it, of. but because they can't afford the data prices. Mm. It's only a few people in this country that can afford the data prices. And the worst part about it all is that even those that can afford the data prices need to choose what they're going to watch and what they're not going to watch. Mm. It's, it's about a choice to say, look, I can't afford to watch a podcast, not because I don't have time to watch it, but because I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. I don't have enough money. Sure. If you take 350 and you look at, that's what the, 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 the young people get in this country, and you look at how do you spend that food, transport, your needs, you get to data. It's right it's, at the end. Yes, and, yes, yes, yes. Usually for many South Africans, it's a luxury that they can't afford. So I think that's the first thing, connecting people in this country to the internet. There are people in this country who believe that South Africa is poor. Mm. I've met people who've, who've convinced me that this country doesn't, this country have, enough, doesn't have enough. You know? um, and the truth is that's not true. Sure. This country is the top three richest countries in the world. There was this study that was done by, by a couple of intellectuals, professors, business people, where they were looking at what is the richest country in the world. Okay. It's just a, a study that they wanted to find out. And? And in this study, they, they got stuck at three countries. They said, look, we don't have a number one, but we have a top three. Okay. And they said the top three is Russia, Congo, and South Africa. They said we can't choose who's the top three out of these three countries. Look, I think South Africa is number one. Um, and I'm sure many of people course, of course. Argue with me and say, look, maybe we're number two, maybe we're number three, but we're top three. Mm -hmm. right? And for a country that's top three richest in the world, how do we still have a majority of the people living in poverty every day? So there's so many things in this country that people have come to believe that's just a lie. People believe that in this country, you must earn 5,000, 6,000, 10,000, and, and you're doing well, and, and that's it. That's the best that these companies can do. It's Got a it. big lie. What is perpetuating this lie? I think it's the fact that the same perpetrators of apartheid, okay. they realized that the same way we lied to them about apartheid. Because remember, apartheid was the biggest lie. Yes. Apartheid was a lie that, said that black people should live in a certain area, should ah. earn a certain area. Yes, 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 yes. And what happened after apartheid is that lie then moved 
it became, okay, you are free, but the lie became, we don't have enough. So there must be load shedding. And load shedding makes you believe that, ooh, the electricity we enough. have is not enough. Got it. There must be water shedding. Ooh, maybe South Africa does not have enough water. There must be students fighting for schools, for fees must fall. Maybe we don't have enough for, for the uh. education. And that lie becomes the truth for many people. But it's still a lie. A lot of people in this country believe that things are tough in South Africa because they're supposed to be, you know. But they don't realize that actually there's people and families in this country that are regarded the richest people in the world mm. just from South Africa because they sponsor that lie. They want people to believe that that's true. And the more people believe that's true, they're very happy. Then, yes, yeah, yes, yes, they, yes. They're extremely happy because that lie feeds to them making more money. And the truth of the matter is we must realize that it's a very big lie. Ownership in this country must change. The JSC... Is that, the, is, 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 that, is that where the lie is? The lie is in the ownership. It's not that we don't have enough. We've got enough. But the enough is with a select group of people. Yes, that's uh, the lie. You know, I often say to people that you'd be shocked if you had to look at the assets that people own from this country. Mm. I was doing some reading on the Zondo Commission. Mm -hmm. So the Zondo Commission comes out and they say to us, look, we spend one billion uncovering corruption in this country. Got it. And they basically drafted millions of papers, lots of documents. And I've been ambitious. I said, you know what? I'm going to read all these documents. Sure. You know? And I've read, I haven't finished because when you read the Zondo Commission, the stuff you find in there is so shocking then that you still ask yourself questions. Yes. There are things in the Zondo Commission that basically explains that politicians that steal money from this country have built the Chinese railway system, right? That they stole money from South Africa and they built the Chinese railway system. Uh. Their, their readings in the Zondo Commission where there's a woman from China who's in this country and she walks around with like 200 million, 300 million and she walks around with all these money bags and she's caught with these money bags and immediately after being caught with this money bag, she then flees the country on some private jet. Okay. And when you read the Zondo Commission, it feels like you're reading something more extreme than Hollywood. You know, mm, that get it. Politicians that are giving 350 crowns every single day have uh, enough money to invest in building the Chinese railway system uh, that basically imports and exports stuff out of China. And you begin to realize that the lie in this country is that there is no money. Money is available and it's in abundance. Sure. The politicians, they take this money. The, the business people, they take this money. And the first thing they do because it's stolen money from the people mm. is they move it out of the country. I always say to people that you look at somebody like Julius Malema. Okay. When Julius started, he started off beautifully saying the land. Got it. Jobs. We're going to get back the banks. You know? Right. He seems to now, have gotten to a place where he's now seated in Hyde Park. He's seated in the upper enchilance of this country. And he's no longer saying those things as much as he, as he did when he started. So what do you suspect is happening to Juju? Look, I think that the basis of it is that he obviously got into the rooms of power. And when he got into those rooms of power, they offered him money. Mm. And when he got access to that money, immediately he, he, the fight he was fighting for became different. Because, because he's no longer fighting from a place where he's with the masses. Uh, he's now fighting from a place where he's now been given something or a part of something. And I always say that what we need in South Africa, we need somebody who will stand for the truth and be held accountable to the truth. Got it. And that's so important because when you've sold yourself out to the truth, a few things begin to happen. Mm. The truth sets you free. And that's one thing that has happened to me that I, I, don't, I don't have to ever in my whole entire life buy into the lie because I've bought the truth and I've realized that the truth has set me free. Got it. The message that we speak at Arise South Africa, it's a message that we, we haven't been funded by, by the same people that fund other political Yes, um, I think your funding, mod your funding model has been, people have been contributing yes. to, to the work that you guys are doing. Do you think that's sustainable for a political party? Look, I, I would like to think that th there have been many people in this world that have come through and have shared their gospel, Got their it. truth, right? Okay. Without funding. And the truth hit home and found home in people's hearts. Mm. You look at people like Mahatma Gandhi. Sure. These were people that were not funded. Who Nelson Mandela, he was not funded until he came out of that of, of, of prison, you know. Oh. Until he came out of prison. That's okay. <laughs> because you're not really going to be funded to go into prison. Yes, get it. Um, people like Jesus Christ, mm. he didn't have any funding. 
You know, this was a man who walked sandals. We're hearing that he was black, he was white. These uh, are interesting narratives. Got it. But in today's day and age, there's still people that resonate with the truth. And mm. where I am, I'm saying, let's tell the truth. Those that resonate with the truth will buy the truth and they'll ensure that they fund the truth because they resonate with the truth. And those that don't, I mean, you, it, it, a lie can run fast, but it, it, it won't outrun the truth. The truth will always prevail. Get it. Someone might argue, in fact, speaking about truth and politics of the truth, is that truth is relative to, to, to where a person is. So, for example, um, somebody in a young person, a young person, the reality that I live and my truth here in Johannesburg is not the same truth that a person in the deep rules of KZN is experiencing. Do you know what I mean? Um, to you as a rice South Africa, how do you negotiate um, the concept of a truth? Because that person is living in their truth where they need to go get water from a village. Um, if you look at children in the Eastern Cape that have to cross rivers to go to schools, that is their truth. Whereas my child gets into a bus, that's their truth as well. So how do you bridge the gap between these two truths as a rise South Africa? Look, there's a scripture in the Bible that says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Got it. All right. And I've really realized that that's true. Okay. Once you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Mm. I grew up in the finance industry, right? And I grew up in cryptocurrencies, mm. right? And blockchain technology. And I remember when I started off, I acquired that skill, mm. right? Cryptocurrencies and blockchain. Sure. And... I was in university, I was in third year when I decided, you know what, I'm going to do this, right? And I started a consultancy, right, of speaking to financial institutions and teaching them about cryptocurrency and blockchain. Just at third year? Yeah. And when I got out of university, people said to me, look, you're just starting out. Mm. Um, it's important that your fees are reasonable, right? And I remember when I was just starting out, I'd started doing some research as to what people charge. You know, and I, I got to find out that, okay, people like... Vusit and Mbogayo charge 85,000 rand to speak at an event, you know. And in those days, they were saying that Ponang charges 80,000 rand to appear at uh, a club for an hour, right? An appearance fee. Get it. And I said, look, I'm, I'm not Ponang. I'm actually giving knowledge that I believe will be useful for the future. Uh -huh. And I said, my fee will be 45,000 rand to speak. Okay. And somebody said, you're crazy. That nobody's going to pay 45,000 rand to hear you to speak. To hear you speak. Said, for an hour, that's what I'll charge. And did they pay? And they did. They, I, I spoke in over 20 different institutions. The government of Namibia mm. invited me. The South African government invited me in many of events. Investec invited me. APSAS mm. invited me. They paid. Got it. Because the knowledge that I had was knowledge that they needed. Uh -huh. you know? And I went back to those people and I said, look, the difference of my charging and anybody else's charging was the knowledge that I had. Mm -hmm. I had the knowledge of blockchain technology. I understood that blockchain technology is the future. I understood that this thing is going to change the world. Sure. And those institutions that paid, your Investex, all these institutions, today they've made millions, if mm. not billions, sure. from blockchain technology, from the knowledge that I shared with them. I knew that my knowledge was valuable. My 45,000 rand has made them billions. Perhaps I should have charged 300,000. Uh. <laughs> Perhaps I should have charged more. You know? Perhaps I was quite cheap. You know? But I want to bring it back to that two in yes, case it ain't yes. that that child is not aware that the land that they are in exports coal to the world. And the world is able to build all these industries based on their coal. Mm -hmm. They're not aware that, you know, at Richard's Bay, where they're playing in the sand and they're playing on this coal, they're kicking that coal. They're not aware that that coal is the reason why London has been built. Got it. It's the reason why the, the first and second industrial revolution happened was coal power stations. Uh -huh. They're not aware that China is able to produce all it's able to produce because of that coal. Sure. And it needs somebody to go to them and say, hey, this coal that you're playing with here, this is the reason why the whole world exists. Mm. This is the reason why the whole world is able to be prosperous. Sure. And that kid says, you're lying. And we say, it's true. And we say to that kid, close off Richard's Bay and watch who will come and speak to you. And the kid says, that's not possible. You're lying. This coal is useless. I've been living on this coal for My many whole years. Life. And we say, try it. And that kid goes and closes off Richard's bay. The moment he does so, he'll realize that people will be flown from the US, from China, from the UK, to come and find out who is this person blocking our wealth. Mm. Kings will come and say, who is this person blocking our wealth? CEOs will come and say, hey, you young man from KZN, who do you think you are? Sure. And this kid will sit down and say, oh, hold on. You guys took your private jets to come and see me just because of this call. 
I know my power. Got I it. know what I've got is worth something. Now that you've arrived, let's have a conversation. How about instead of you paying me for this cold in a currency that doesn't function for me, how's about you pay me this cold in gold? Sure. I want you to start paying me the cold that I give you in cold. And they say, why? And he says, well, if you don't, I'm going to stop giving it to you. And immediately they start to say, okay, you know what? Let's negotiate. Mm. Kid, come on the table. And this kid says, before I negotiate, I have to go and get water from the river every day. I need water. For mm. me to come and sit at the table, I need some water. And they say, okay, give him the water. And it's about them realizing that actually we are the richest. So, so is that what you're doing? You are awakening people, rather young people, to disrupt the system so that they I'm can telling them the sit truth. at the table. I'm telling them the truth, yeah. Because I think when you say awaken, it sounds like you have to go out and let them know something that isn't there. Got it. Yeah, it, it, sounds, it sounds very like, it sounds like it's a big job. You know, I worry. I, 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 I like I like people that stand up and want to speak for young people. But I worry about our young people in a sense that, um, first of all, our young people, there's a majority of them who are just unemployed. There is a majority of them who could be employed. They've got degrees, but they, you, do you know what I mean? So there's a lot of despondency and there's a lot of it's not my problem as young people. So there's an awakening that needs to happen that it is your problem. And you do need to sort of speak about these problems because they affect your everyday lives. Um, is my worry valid? Is this a worry that is merited? Look, I think what you're saying is true. And, and what I've come to learn, and it's a truth that many people are not ready and willing to accept. Mm. Political parties have numbed the pain sure. of South Africa. Sure. I'll give you an example. You're a young person. You're serious about the land. Mm. You're serious about changing the country. Sure. Right? You join the EFF. When you join the EFF, the EFF says to you, uh, fighter, it's good that you're serious about this thing, but uh, you can't close down the mine. These guys have donated funds to us. Mm. Let's not close down the mine. Let's rather negotiate with them. And what happens is your, your vigor, your ambition, your fighting in you is toned down because somebody's received funds and now they've come back to you and they've given you a different narrative. Mm. And you as a young person begin to say, ah, you know what? This is not how things work. Things take time. And you now ask yourself, to say, okay, who told you things take time? You say, no, no, no. I've joined the ANC. The ANC has told us that we're still working on a draft proposition. We have to go to conference. We have to vote. These things take time. These political parties that have been set up, they've been set up to fool our people. Got it. To calm the anger, to say, oh, you're a fighter. Come and join us. But in your fighting, we'll march. We, we won't fight the banks. We'd, we'd rather, you know, fight maybe one or two marches here. Let's not be too disruptive, you know. And it's like these political parties have collected all these people. You're an intellectual. Come, come be in the DA. Come draft papers. Come listen to somebody speak, you know. Oh, you, you, you're a fighter. You're violent. Come join the EFF. Come in, come in. Oh, you, 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 you like rhetoric. Come to the ANC. Let's talk about none of the political parties are acting. And what we're saying is that we're, we're not going to let people join us and we're not going to sit down and discuss rhetoric and all these things. No, Get it. We're not going to do that. So what, what, what are you guys going to do? We're going to bring the world to the negotiating table. How? We're saying, number one, by doing the things that I've spoken about. Uh -huh. We're going to bring them and say, number one, our currency is wrong. We're not one rand equals 20 dollars. I mean, one dollar equals 20, 20 rands. No, our currency is wrong. Firstly, we must fix the currency situation. Banks have manipulated our currency. Got it. Our currency has been manipulated for many years. We need our currency fixed. That's our first thing. The second thing, many of these politicians in this country have negotiated loans that we continue to pay every single year based on their negotiations. We're going to call back those loans and say, hold on, we're, we're going to stop paying these loans. Mm. And when people speak about this, you know, people get so afraid because I think a lot of the times... People have been used to politicians that were not smart, you know. People have been used to politicians that, that they could control, you know. I come from a cryptocurrency and blockchain situation. Got it. Right? We made Bitcoin what it is. Uh -huh. we, we did that. I went to New York. I met the creators. I've sat down with them. We understand these things, you know. We, we don't speak. I, I'm not one that wants to speak so that people can think, hey, this and that and the other. And, and, I, and a lot of people think, oh, okay. 
these ones just you know i've heard the narratives of oh they've got the good english you know what are they going to do behind that good english is yes. some earth-shattering information got that it. will cause the world to come to a standstill so what we're going to do is we're going to position africa to where it should be which is the best country in the world not because we're not already mm. because it is the truth sure and for us to deal with those things they're fundamentals we must fix the banking system needs to be fixed got it. the currency situation uh-huh. needs to be fixed we need to re-educate our people our people have been very much educated to be administrators if you look at the education system Tell me it more. doesn't teach you anything that you can do with the stuff you own sure it teaches you how to administrate how to use things that have been created and you found them there mm. we want to teach our people how to use the stuff that they own so how would what does that look like you know um majority of the young people in this country are in an education sort of system whether high school university post grad whatever what what do your education policies look like if they're different to to what exists practical what exists. universities tell me more i'll give you an example if you look at agriculture uh oh. people are going to colleges and they're learning about agriculture and when after they learn about agriculture they write exams and that's it and then that's yeah. it practical universities if i'm talking about agriculture the government will have land in limpopo okay that they own sure that land will build the university there this is not a university where you're going to do theory no mm. when you come to that university we give you 200 hectares of land and we say you're studying pumpkins sure that's what you're studying mm. we've got a professor who's teaching we're not saying theorize the pumpkin no plant the pumpkin uh, your exam is on the pumpkin oh. you passing is on the pumpkin oh mr lecturer if this pumpkin doesn't grow you're not going to get a salary because you're failing as a lecturer Oh no but I've been taught theorizing that's not what we we pay you to do. Sure. We're not basing it on theories. The pumpkin must grow because that's what we're doing here. If we're funding this university, we're funding the pumpkin to grow. Mm. That's what when we say that this student has graduated, the pumpkin has grown. Once the student graduates, there must be land that that person can be given to now go and farm those pumpkins. Seems like a, the land issue is quite a is quite a, a a funny issue because I think the EFF had something similar a couple of weeks ago of um the government owning land and people then being able to use that land is it a similar module model is it a different model look I think I think the the danger with the EFF is that they they started well mm. but along the way um I believe that they they, they were captured with a sort of apathy of not bringing about change okay correct right? you go into the EFF and you ask fundamental questions to say you guys have had a lot of ample time what have you changed in the things you said you want to change there's nothing there's nothing really that they've changed they've they've gathered every angry person in this country and, and they've told them calm down they've, they've appeased the anger ah uh, there's nothing that they've changed the the anger that they speak about we'll change the land we'll do this we'll do that nothing has changed one would argue devil's advocate here that these things take time processes no um it's you, they, you know you can't destabilize a country dubai use their oil to build uh. it didn't it didn't take time it didn't take time i visited dubai and i visited dubai i think about three times now got it The first time around I went I went on my own to do a research study. Sure. The second time I was invited. Mhm. They paid for me to go. It was a company in Dubai. They booked me first class. Um I I think it was first class of business, but basically they spent about 700,000 rand. Sure. On getting me to go to Dubai. Got this it. Trip. And I did a vlog about it when I was there. They showed me Bugattis. They took me to a place and showed me Bugattis. They said, "Look, move to Dubai." come and become this blockchain mega super person in mm. Dubai and and I saw all of it and I said hmm these guys are smart they bring the best in the world they spend to bring the best in the world to come so they can build with them i went to dubai i came back and i said you know what i'm not going to do it there were other people who were also in the industry in this country that are now living in dubai mm. people like craig jebesi right he's also experienced this but he's in dubai he decided sure. to go And I said 
the, the model behind Dubai is that they build for the best. Mm. That's what they do. They essentially bribe the best in the world to, to come, come and, and those people build for them. Sure. Right. I've had an interesting encounter with the natives of Dubai. The people that were in Dubai, live in Dubai, are from Dubai. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to say something controversial. And I mean, yeah, Twitter, go ahead. Say it. They're very dumb. Very dumb. The Extremely people. dumb. To the point where when you speak to them, <laughs> you even walk away asking yourself, what, what is going on here? Right. Some of the natives don't even know how to speak English. Okay. Some of the natives to them, it's a woman must sit at home, cook. Okay. That's it. A woman must not speak back. Right. They, their knowledge on the, how the world works is so limited to the sure. point where you'll be like, this is somebody from Dubai. This is somebody who's, who's like, what do you mean this guy's telling me that women must not work? Women must wear robes. Women must. You sit there and you're like, here, yeah, this is a, a person who, who understands something. Then you ask yourself, who built Dubai? If these guys are thinking like this. <coughs> Mm. And you realize that it's not there. So, so the I, I just need to qualify the dumb statements because, like, I get touched when people get called dumb. They are dumb because they're not liberal in thought, or they or they, inclusive, they, traditional. They, and, 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 and let me explain my, my 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 definition of dumb because I'm trying to prove a point here. They are dumb in that they believe certain things mm. that the world has proved to not be to true. not be true. Got it. Like a woman must not ever work. Get it. The world has showed us that women are able to contribute at the highest avalanches of life. Sure. You know, and, and these are people that believe that. And no matter what science can show them or explain to them, they'd still believe that. Right. Do you and, think. And, and hold on. I, yeah, yeah. I, I want to just bring this back to context. Yeah, yeah. Me calling them dumb is me trying to show South Africans that it's not about education. Yes. Because with you, I. I I, I don't want to get into people watching the interview and thinking, oh, he called people in Dubai dumb. How dare he? You're missing the point. Get it. The point is, people believe South Africans are dumb. 30% mm. mathematics. Oh, we don't have smart people in this country. No wonder we have load shedding. Yeah, uh -huh. No wonder things are not working. People in this country are stupid. Yeah, they're not smart. Hello, there are people in Dubai that are worse. But they are not the ones building Dubai. Dubai goes out to the world and says, are you the best at what you do? Come. Come. Let me tell you a little bit about the trip that I went to in Dubai right? sure. from this blockchain company. Before I took that trip, they, they reached out and said, we want you to come to Dubai and we want you to come and experience what we're going to show you, right? And I said to them, mm, okay, I'll come. Let's see, right? And they spoke to some people in Nigeria as well. And they basically took people in Nigeria, Ghana, and South Africa, Right. The guys in Nigeria that they spoke to, they said to some of them, um, we want to book you. The guy said, oh, we're excited. They said, right, how are we booking you? And they said, look, um, we'll book you um, economy class flights mm. and you'll come through. And when they spoke to me, I said to them, I don't fly economy. Right. And they said, what type of African doesn't fly economy? I said, well, I don't. I don't. I've never since my days in university. I'm not flown economy. Uh -huh. And they said to me. No, you will fly economy. And I said, tell the owners of the company that if they're telling me to fly economy, I'm not coming. Got it. The moment they spoke to the owners, the owners called me and said, we're so sorry for how these agents in Africa have been treating you. We do not treat people like this. We reprimanded them and we told them everything you need should be done for you. Mm. When I landed, there were vehicles that took me to where I need to go. I had insistence. I had the best hotel rooms. I had everything of the best, mm. right? By the way, my age, I'm a kid in Africa. Sure. Right. But in Dubai? But in Dubai, they saw the knowledge that I had. Sure. Right. And they, they, they saw what I've been able to build. That, okay, this kid's in Africa. He understands blockchain technology. He's contributing on papers. He's going out in the world and talking about it. He's written a book about this. And mm, they're like, mm, shucks, mm, 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 mm. we need to get him in, you know. And when I was in Dubai, what was very interesting for me was realizing that in Dubai, their language is always... Move to Dubai and build in Dubai. Sure. Move your company to Dubai and build, and build here. Yeah. Basically, what they do is they find the best in the world to come and build. Right? We already have the minerals. Yes. The land. Sure. We have all these things. We can build the best things by bringing in the best people in the world. If we were saying that. 
people in South Africa can't build, we can't do this. We can build the best. Mm. I'll give you an example. There, there's somebody who's part of Arise South Africa and he's one of our leaders. I wouldn't mention his name. Sure. But he brought the best architects in the world to come and build a building here in Johannesburg. And? They're ready. They're willing, right? All they're waiting for is the environment to allow them to do that. That's all they're waiting for. It's, it's for them to just say, look, we spoke to the municipality. We want to build 24-7. We spoke to the municipality. They told us that whenever you build something in South Africa, you need to stop building at 5 o'clock. Mm. Our model is built on building 24-7. It's a municipality issue. Sure. You need someone in the municipality to be like, listen, these are the be- this is the best construction company in the world. Give them the permit to build 24-7. The municipality is saying, aye, man. But I'm a fly law. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. yes. So is it a matter of our policies and our bylaws are sort of holding the, the certain things got behind? That are running these systems yes. are not the right people. These are pensioners that don't understand how things function. That is, one would argue that is ageist. You can't, you can't call people Look, pensioners. Look, I, I don't think it's ageist. I think it's realizing that the apartheid government damaged the way of thinking. Mm-hmm. And it's realizing that if we're going to fix it for them as well, we need to allow them to move out and get people that haven't been affected by apartheid to start leaving. Do you honestly think that um, the, the, the realization that you've had about apartheid is a new realization, or are there other thought leaders in the country who share similar sentiments as you? And do you then collaborate with those already exi- existing minds? Look, I think one thing is clear, and, and, and this is the conversation that I've had with a lot of people, mm. that... The people that were subjected to apartheid, right? They need the new generation sure. to assist them. And it's very controversial, but I think it's important that I share it so people understand, mm. right? Apartheid was bigger than just a racial thing. It was a mindset thing. Given. Right. It, it taught black people that a black man can do this much and stop here. It taught black people that a regime can just take everything you've built overnight. Mm. It taught black people that your leaders can get executed. It taught black people that you can build, but only to this extent. It taught black people alcoholism. Mm. It taught black people that the township is a bad place that cannot be fixed. It taught black people, it, it indoctrinated them. It, 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 for lack of a better word, I would say it was a demon that forced them to believe things that were not real. Valid. You know? And for you to deal with that demon, you, you need a generation of people that, that haven't been exposed to that demon. Right. Nothing. I was born in 1994. Sure. Freedom. Right. When you look at me and I look at Elon Musk, I'm not intimidated. I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking... I'll never wake up one day and say, "Ah, bo." Let's listen to that. Elon Musk, na bo, na bo Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. To me, I'm saying this, these guys are bred. Do you, I, I like that because then it it brings me to the concept of born free. Is that um, the the born free generation, as contested as the term might be, that it's a generation that 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 wants to fight at the global stage and is is willing and able to. Um, but when you look at it realistically, not realistically, because then it's again we're freeing your mind as well. Because when you say realistically, it's like you. It's, you are believing it's, it's like I'm believing apartheid. Yeah. But, but but when you look at the vectors that still hold black young South Africans, which is who you speak to a lot, there are issues that stop these these young people like yeah. myself yeah. from from dreaming and from allowing dreaming this to be real and yeah. allowing this to but be real but umpo selling us too good of a dream do you know what i mean yeah, like, and for for me what does he mean all this can happen i i want I, I would like for you to speak to 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 the average south african and understand the vectors that they are experiencing the lie. Let's the, the lie. Yeah. Okay, let's call it the lie. The lie yeah. so, 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 so all of these lies that are tying them down, yes. do you get that your job, as for, for the great mission that you hold and for the truth that you talk about, that you've got so many lies 
to undo. Yes. And it's war every day. It's war every day. Yeah. But in order for you to to untie that lie, this lie, that lie, that lie, you need to have a clear understanding because we love our lies. Yes. People people become, you know, and, 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 and this is why I've I've started this studying exorcism. Mm. Right. To say, hi man, I think when I'm a demonila. You know, and <laughs> that is so what, religious. That's what he said to me. They said, Hi, man, you're being dramatic. And I said, No, ma, think about it. You can't be living in the richest country in the world and be poor for 30 years mm. and still believe your poverty is the right thing. Like, we show you the gold. Sure. We show you the silver. Sure. We show you the platinum. Sure. We show you the, the agriculture. We show you, we show you, we show you, we show you. And then the moment you see them, you still turn around and say, Hi, man. 350, right. No, but that's... You know? a, that, no, no, no let, let me take it further, right? And I've been studying to say, how do demons work? Oh, you know? <laughs> because because, because I, I, I need to take it there to the point where I, 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 I'm starting to, to realize that the, the war I'm fighting in South Africa is a physical and a spiritual war sure. as well, right? Sure. Because they, they, there is a spirit of poverty amongst South Africans that believes that we should be poor, mm. right? Let me maybe explain. Please do. If you look at the research out there, right? You look at what we have in our land, right? You look at how things work in our land, right? And you look at the way people live. Mm. You can understand that the war we are fighting is, is quite special. I don't know where you're from. Where are you from? I'd like to make... Oh, a... I'm from KZN. KZN. Oh, okay, cool. Let's talk about KZN. In KZN, right, there are Chinese people that have come to the king, right, and have asked to open a coal mine mm. in KZN, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. They have a mine that exports coal, right? The people in KZN are affected by load shedding, Right. When the people in KZN ask to say, what are you Chinese people using the coal for? The Chinese people say, we're using the coal to power China electricity, right? But now they say, can we have jobs to help you instead of power China? They say, we'll give you jobs. Then they ask, how do you guys power China? And they say, we take coal, we take it to a big furnace, we burn it. Mm. Turbines move, we power the coal. Like it's it. a much technical process that yes. perfectly done. And these people still say, Wow, that's amazing. Okay, let us help you give you more coal. Every day we'll clog in at six, we'll clog out at five to help you make China have electricity. Mm. When they get home, they have no electricity. So 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 my question, I've studied this thing to say, hi man, is it knowledge? And you go to those people and you say, you're working at this mine. What do you think this coal does? I said, no, no, the coal. The coal powers China. Yeah. China has electricity 24-7 because of this because coal. Of, yeah. And then you say, do you have electricity? And they say, no, we don't. Sure. They say, why? And they're like, ah, you know these things. They're difficult. And you're like, but you, you, you're giving China coal. Can, can we help I, each I, other? I yeah. see it. What, what, what do you call that? That's why I'm saying I started studying it's a bit of a... to say... Maybe no more, yala. No, no, no. Eh? Because can you say it's education? They understand what the coal is. What doing. the coal is for? Yeah. But consider the system. So I, I get oh, the analogy. Okay. So, so the, the demon is a system. Yeah, well, definitely, we can, you, Let's not call it a demon. Let's open it up to say it oh, is a system. A, a system. So let's say. Okay. So let's deal with the system then. Is is that what we're doing? That's what we have to do. Yes. But but, but, but what I'm saying is what I encounter every day with South Africans mm. is. South Africans make it seem like we are the crazy ones for telling them that this country has enough. Get you know, it. Like, ah, I like coal. There's no coal. And I'm like, hi, hey, Bo, you come from KZN. Here's the coal. Here's the truck of coal. Sure. I die. I, I, there's no coal. That's what I'm saying. Is it a spirit? Do you see the... the, the, the um, do you, your job is actually quite cut out for you because as a leader... Oh, it is. It is. You, but but, but I, I'm fighting forces. I'm fighting forces every day because sure. the moment I say that the coal is available, do you know what the Chinese will say? Uh. The Chinese will say to, to people, what this guy is telling you might be true, but if you guys decide that you want to listen to him, mm. we'll end your jobs. And then so the Immediately people... Immediately they're like, ooh! 
Because people don't want to lose jobs. But listen, the coal is the job. Uh-huh. The reason you have this job is because you have the coal. <laughs> so how, how, it's a lie what he's telling you. You're not going to lose the job. They need the coal. How are you going to awaken the South Africans up to, to, to that level? Because that's yeah. your job. That, that's really your job. That, that is your job, yeah. I've done it with you. So whoever's watching will be awakened. Oh, son, I... Oh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but I'm hoping that the moment you're, you, you, you're, you've, you've arisen, you'll let the next person know. Mm. They'll let the next person know. They'll let the next person know. They'll let the next person know. And immediately you've got a whole crew of people saying... We, 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 we are now scholars of Umpota God. He's now it. telling us that we've got this call. Is it a cult? Are you, you starting know? a cult? It, I, 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 it, the poverty side of it, it seems like they have a cult. So because it's difficult to get people out of, out of poverty. Yeah, so, so maybe my cult of wealth must be stronger. You know, I, it, it must be stronger than the poverty cult where, ah. where, where it must be bigger and stronger and more vigorous. I know? get it. Yeah, but, but if we want to call it that, we're calling it. But, but the work we're doing here is we, we are telling the truth to free the minds of the people. Let me give you another example. Rustenburg. I've been to Rustenburg. Sure. Right? Rustenburg has something called Crone, right? Which every car in this country or a lot of the, the steel structures, a lot of stuff you see in this country has got a yeah. component of chrome, mm. right? Ferrochrome, different uh, uses. A track of chrome leaving Rustenburg, it varies depending on the market. 20,000 to about 60,000 if it's ferrochrome, has it been processed? Lots of questions. Sure. Let's play it easy and say 40,000, right? A truck leaving, right? Per day from Rustenburg. Got hundreds of trucks that are leaving Rustenburg, right? At 40,000. Mm. Right? The people in Rustenburg, some of them are still in shacks, some of them are still in, in small little houses, some of them are still suffering. The chrome, they literally can dig it with a shovel. Like, the people. Yeah, the people. Yes. Right? Yet you go to Rustenburg and you ask them to say, why is it that people in Rustenburg are still poor? Why don't you have jobs? They don't have answers. They, they believe that the ANC will fix it or the DA will fix it or sure. the EFF will fix it. They, that, that lie is still there, you know. And, and the work that we are doing is to say to them, stop believing the lie. It doesn't take 30 years for us to build a factory. So do you think, do you think that the, 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 the ANC and the other political parties are not doing the work to emancipate the people? Oh, no. The, the work they're doing is to keep the people believing the lie. Mm. Mm. Their job is to discredit me. Their job is to say, <laughs> what Mpo is saying is not possible. Their job is to make sure that, make sure that Mpo never gets enough funding. Because if we can take Mpo to Rustenburg, and he tells the whole community of Rustenburg, all of them tomorrow will be waking up and saying, stop this truck from leaving. Because Glencore, Samanko, come to the table. There will be no truck leaving. And people will be saying, but if there are no truck leaving, what will happen to our job? Then we'll say to them, listen, you have this job because you have the chrome. Get it. Yeah. Your jobs are going to go anywhere. The fact that the chrome is on the ground, oh no, that's your job. You're guaranteed with your job. But the land doesn't belong to the people in Rustenburg, nor do the minerals that are on the land. Look, and, and, and that's also part of the lie. That's also part of the very big lie. Because the truth is that the land belongs to the people. Let me give you just a bit, right? Yeah. So we were students at one point and we were at the forefront of the fees must fall, right? And what we were fighting for was free education. And I always bring this up, especially for us as the born free generation, that Fees Must Fall was the big, one of the biggest things that we did for ourselves and for our, you know, younger brothers, the future generations. But we experienced students before, be, be, beat student brutality. We also saw them being shot. And some of them up until late are still in court, still fighting. The education is ours, the land is ours, but we experienced that brutality. So how do you speak to, to, to that young South African that fought for what they thought they believed in, that believed that the education was theirs to take and they took it, but they were still shot at and they have not gotten their justice? Because that, that's what it's going to look like in Rustenburg. That's what it's going to look like in KZN. Once people start digging, once start people digging, yeah. what's the protection that you're offering for people? Because the truth 
dangerous. Oh, oh, no, the truth is not dangerous. The lie is dangerous. Poverty is more dangerous than, than wealth. But okay, let's come back to that. Very good question. Phase Miss 4 was hijacked by the ANC and the EFF. And it's all captured on video. The ANC and the EFF, their job is to appease the masses. I think, you know, the, the work that we have to do is so deep mm. because... Here's, here's the problem, right? Or, 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 or rather, here's the confession. Let me start the confession. Sure. I used to also believe the lie. I used to also believe the lie, but no, 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 no. ANC, what's it? No, no, what's it? I will fix these things. I used to believe the lie. I'm on the to how come on to a party in Java? Believe the lie. Uh huh. Until I, 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 I got to the upper enchilantes and I was an advisor. I sat in the same rooms as Sil Ramaphosa, Got the it. biggest companies in the world, sure. I was advising. Sure. And in that room, that's when I realized, oh, the masses have bought into a lie. And we'll give you action, but still, you're bought into the lie. Do you, do you, do you, let, 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 me, let me take it further, right? You fought for an education, right? Free, free, fees must fall. Hey, education, da 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 after you fight for that education, you're unemployed. Mm. Maybe you fought for the wrong thing. Maybe that energy was, was put on the right thing. Because remember that the enemy knows that there'll always be a revolution. Sure. Give the people something to fight for. Give them something. Give them a reason to fight for. Mm. You know? and let, let, let there be fights so that we can continue moving the tracks. I said to somebody, good tip. Why is it that there's load shedding, but the trucks at Richards Bay don't stop? Hypo, in the load shedding lapper every day, the trucks that are going, this is all planned. They want us to be occupied with load shedding, occupied with water shedding, believe the lie that there's not enough while they take everything from us. If you go to Richards mm. Bay, there's a backlog of trucks. You saw those lines, and I, I hope you've got the clip, and I hope the editors can put it. A long line of trucks waiting to deliver, yet the whole country is in load shedding, unemployment, mm. this, that, and the other. Poor oh, dangerous thoughts. Oh, yes, it's dangerous, but it is the truth. Get it? Yeah, Jesus was crucified for the truth. You could, I, I, I battle with, um, I, I, I battle with, oh, no, Jesus, I'll bring Jesus. Okay, uh, <laughs> even if you don't... And, not and, not, not and, even and, don't bring on, Jesus. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I have to say this, right? Right. Because a lot of people have often said to me to say, um, for your religious um, explanations cause us to fall off because what if we don't believe, right? Mm. And I've always said to them to say, look, I wish I could use Ushaka as an example. But whenever I do, do you know what people say to me? You're not Zulu? No. They stole the land from Ushak. Okay. They killed Ushak. Uh-huh. So why won't they do that to you? You know, whenever I use, people always come. So, so, so I'm using examples of where people can say, hey, the Vatican does own a lot of gold. Mm. People did use Jesus and they created wealth. Get it. You know, people did use, you know, and, and I'm saying, well, if people did use them, it's our turn now as South Africa. To... Yeah, let's, let's, let's partake. If it's a grace, let's jump into the grace oh, and, and, and oh, where to Jesu is about wealth. It's about wealth. Yeah, to say that in, in the name of Jesus, every South African must be rich. True. Yeah, and that's the new gospel. Everybody is saying, hey, gospel, yaga Jesu manjes kulmange mali lapa. U Jesu uti, it's a sin to be poor. But hey, it's a sin to be poor. Everybody is saying, hey, 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 if you are poor, you are sinning, Baba. And, and let that be the new gospel. But you rep, there's a new gospel in town. The gospel says that Jesus is saying all the wealth must come back to Africa. Mm. And they say, how, how comes it? Hey, this is what Jesus is saying. Everything you stole must come back. So I worry. I, I, I worry about that because then um, it's sort of imperialistic where it's, 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 this is the world and there's a lot of other religions. And you just, do you, I, do you, do you not fear that you systematically exclude other religions? Um, young, look, peop- look, young people, young people who don't, who don't necessarily. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course. And, and, and in a right South Africa, we made it clear to say we welcome everybody. Yeah. Right? We welcome everybody. So we are not in the business of um, discluding certain people, etc. Mm. Right? Let me, let me maybe bring it uh, closer to home because th- this is the truth, right? You go to Dubai. Mm. And you ask them, why is it that there's no crime in Dubai, right? And they'll say to you, well, 
Allah believes that there should be no crime, right? And people are like, okay, well, we're not going to believe in Allah, but there's no crime. Yay, we're excited, right? Every human being has a core. Get it. Right? I've met people who have said to me that Beyonce inspires them. And I said to them, explain. And they say, after watching Beyonce, I'm able to tackle a project. I'm mm. able to open a business. I'm able to do. And people have often asked me, and says, but what inspires you? And I'll say, it's the word of God. Got it. Because that's what I grew up listening to. It grew up understanding. Sure. Right? So when I make these references, I'm making references to the things that have inspired me. Sure. It's not that I'm imposing my religion. Because even when you go to Dubai, they won't say to you, bow before Allah now. But they'll say to you, right, we are doing this through the might that Allah has given us. But do you, do you see, especially in a demographic, in a Democrat, like in a democratic country like South Africa, um, how that could exclude certain people. But it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't because I've never said if you don't believe, you can't enjoy this and that and the other. Got it. No, it doesn't. Okay. Okay. The same way in Dubai, uh, if you are Christian, they don't exclude you. They'll be like, okay, cool. Got it. Yeah. How do you, how do you relate to young people? As a young leader. As a young leader. By the yeah. way, I think it's very brave of you that you want to be a, a, the president of the country yeah. at just the tender age of 29. Yeah. Um, um, you, you know, the, the relation for me to the young people of South Africa has been a very painful relation. Tell me more. So, so I, I went to a private school, right? And I went to a government school. Mm -hmm. So I went to both, right? And I think my true relation to South Africans was when I went to a government school. Because when you go to a private school, I man, private school kids, those are not a representation of the youth on, on, on the country. Got it. Yeah. So when I went to a government school, I, I started to relate to what it means to be a South African. Because you were in that context? Because I was now in a government school. Yeah. You know. Things like getting to a school... And hearing that in the school, Afrikaans is more important than English or Chivan. Mm. This is in a government school. In a government school, okay. yeah. And listening to the slogan of the school being iterated in Afrikaans mm. by black children who were not doing Afrikaans as a subject. Listening to a teacher convincing students not to take Chivan but to focus in Afrikaans because they knew that if most kids take Chivenda, they'll need to hire more Chivenda teachers Got and it. the African teachers would lose their jobs. Oh. You know? This was worse school literate. Looking to a school where prefects were majority white and the students were majority black. Mm. In a very short space of time in being that school, there were so many things that I realized that black young South Africans are going through have accepted mm. and to them they continue to accept on a daily daily basis they work for JSC listed companies mm. these companies have billions in their accounts their internship program is 3,500 per month young black children have accepted mm. I said, why? Have you looked at the financials that this company makes? They said, one person asked questions. They were fired. They were fired. Yeah. So, 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 so let me know. I'm now a radical. I'm now a poor radical. Yeah. And I get to my workplace. And I'm like, this is BS. No, you don't get to your workplace. Or the workplace is not where the power lies. You get to the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. And then the ownership. <laughs> <laughs> they might try one, but if it's an army of us, it will be impossible. So some of us must sacrifice our lives. Oh, yes. And yeah. then our families back home oh, that's must okay. then not uh, no, no, have no, no. breadwinners. No, 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 no. The fact that they, they, they must be those that sacrifice. Mm. Yeah, that's important. Can I, yes, we'll see. There's a, uh, I, I think, but there's a, there's a, there's a cushion, right? That you, there's, there's a cushion that you have. You. It, yeah, it's I a, heard that statement. it's a it's a I've sat in a room with Cyril, which is which, which is great because some of the things that you're coming up with and some of the things that you're saying, like as a young person, I definitely relate to you. But I always have that thing of saying um, there's somebody, number one, um, you're fighting for a business class flight. Yeah, nah, they're not even thinking business class. They're thinking, where am I, where, where am I getting bread? What, what must I do for my family so that mm. they get money, right? Because they believe that lie. Oh, 
Whether they believe it or not, like, I need to go out and get bread. They, they think that's the truth. They, there is no bread. Do, do, do you know what I mean? So for me, there, there's a there's a there's a gentleness that 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 needs to be afforded to to the lie. No, not to the lie. <laughs> to the people that are trapped you, that are trapped in meant. the lie, not the lie. No, 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 no. no. So, 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 are you offering that gentleness, or is it an abrasive thing of you guys are being lied? Because chances are, when people go to bed at night, especially people with degrees or people who read, yeah. like they read, they consume the content, and they see. There's a gentleness that you need to to offer to say guys this is what we can do practically for your situation do you know what i mean <laughs> so 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 you you've just explained the anc ah <laughs> <laughs> you've just explained the anc no way you you've perfectly explained ah. it. To say to say oh but wait we understand you have nothing but money 350 no 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 um poor guy understand tina we live with you things are tough we're not gonna be rude and ask for a business class. As funny now, what team? We are the kitchen girl. We are the garden boy. You, yeah, yeah, you, 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 you are ready to be an MC for No, that is Let's not. Take you to that, no, take you to no, no, stop, <laughs> stop right now. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying. No, no, but but you've just explained the AMC's playbook. These, but these are the realities of. The, so, and so that's why the AMC is like that. So because people often have to choose. The AMC saying perpetuate the lie. Ah, uh, yeah. That's the ANC. Say, so like is Hindu. Yeah, status card. These things, ERDP, you know, we don't have budget. So, so what, what are you gotta, saying? So, so then what does Arise South Africa arise. say? Yeah, I'm saying Arise. I'm saying enough is enough with the lie. So, ANC, we will no longer listen to the lie. So let's look at the RDP house. I was living in a shack. So, so this, this, this is a, is, is a reality. Yeah. So here we go. Um... Uh, we live in a Ooh, township. You, 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 are, you are an ANC kid. The way Stop. you're explaining, I'm just you're asking. On side. <laughs> I'm not. This is the, this is the the way you're explaining, right? Is the way they also explain. Really? Yeah. Maybe, maybe. You, do, do you know what? Maybe it's because I grew up under 29 years, right? Yeah. Of and, ANC. and I've seen it. I've seen. Yeah. We we're gonna come here. There are shacks. Uh, in an election year, we know that we're going to say to this community, let's build you guys shacks. And ah. the ordinary South African will be bamboozled. They'll feel like, hmm, this person built me a house. I owe them something. Now, for you, as a, oh. as a part of your job, it's that thing of saying, yes, you need the house, but you that's your job. Is, is, is that what you're trying and to... Cyril is a billionaire. Uh-huh. A billionaire. Valid. If you fought for your people to be free and these freedoms, and half the people in this country are living in poverty, mm. then have you done it? And you're a billionaire. We, we, we need to wake up and, 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 and face the reality. What, 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 what would you prefer that he does? I, I would prefer that he fights for the whole country mm. to get out of poverty. Get it. Yeah. We must not romanticize poverty. That's what the ANC does. They mm. romanticize it. Yeah, since Zamile and get 350. Woo! That's Zamile. Nice. Umpo, so. Yeah. Umpo's going to come there and say, eh, 350 is not enough. So what is enough? We must calculate how much a human being needs to survive. And then we give them that. And we give you that. Why are we giving it to them when they can... Because... When we can upscale them and give them skills. Hold so on, like hold Teach on. a man how to... Of course, of course. Yeah, no, we get, we're getting there. We're definitely going to sure. get there. Yeah. But we must start by upskilling our people to the point where they have the basics met. Got it. Yeah. You can't be talking teach a man uh, a fish and this and that when the man is in the shack. And he's getting 350 and he's got nothing. You can't be talking that. He's getting 350s in an RDP house. Oh, no, 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 no. There's, he has there's a too many shirt. Checks. There's too many checks in this country. The stats, I believe, there's over 1.6 million households in checks uh -huh. in this country. Sure. Yeah. And these numbers live in my mind, by the and way. And also... Um, because I've heard people say, is there a chart behind uh, where we pause reading these numbers? Because when they Google, they realize that these numbers are there. These numbers live in my mind. And if they live in my mind, they live in all the politicians' minds. It would be interesting to, 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 to investigate with those shacks. I wonder how many degree holders are in those shacks, right? And the reason why I'm saying this is because I, 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 just, I have respect for people that went to university because I think... It's it's easy for them to connect because when you get to university, you taste a certain 
you, you get to sit at some mm, table. You yes, get to yeah. sit at some table. So when you go back to your shack, you know for sure that, no, this is not a truth. Do, do you know what I mean? So uh, do, you, do you connect with those? Angazi, I, I just feel like somebody, I, I like what you guys are doing. Right, I think. Oh, do you mean? Do you I mean, think it's important. Oh, you mean, you mean, I think if, you, if you, you don't take, have a critical mass for it. I get, I get what you mean. You mean if you take um poor to to the shacks, will um poor be able to connect with the people with that with, are with there? the people yeah, that yeah. are there? Look, so 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 here's the interesting thing, right? I've been able to connect, but there's uh, one disconnect. Sure. T-shirts and food parcels. Okay. Um poor doesn't have the money that the ANC has stolen, so um poor does not give them t-shirts and food parcels. <laughs> So um Paul, they love what he's saying. Sure. But unfortunately to them it's ah I got my t shirt, I got my food parcel. Hi. Do you do I don't do, I don't want to listen? Because do, the ANC has ruined them. Has ruined sure. Yeah. So, that was their purpose to say numb them to a point where when um Paul comes and tells them that, hey, you are actually a millionaire. Mm. They are saying ah I Yes, because Abayboni. Yeah, Abayboni. That's the ANC's purpose. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Abayboni. You, you must not see it. Let's speak about the 60 days. Is it 60 days from now? Yes. Things are going down. It's the election. Um, yeah. What do you think the numbers would look like? What do you think the numbers will look like on your end? Look, I think we're definitely going to, to have seats in national um, government. We're definitely going to have seats in provincial government. Um, what I want to fight for is I want to fight for us to to be able to be the decision makers. Sure. That's very important. I often say to people that I've, for me, I want parliament to become a place where people can see ideas flow Mm -hmm. and people themselves can choose which ideas they represent best. Mm. Right. And it's my hope that in every single legislator in, in parliament in South Africa, we've got the ideas that a life South Africa is putting in. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's my hope. These ideas must live there. So I ask and I plead with South Africans because... I will also campaign on my platforms. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> South Africans uh, are, are, to me, very important people. Yeah. Because you, you are asking for the votes of the richest people in the world. In the world, yeah. Um, these, are, these are not... Tom, Dick, and Harry. When you when you when so, you when you speak about South Africans, um, South Africans are not a homogenous group, right? So um, there's rich, poor, and the rich, rich, right? So there's there, there are three classes within South Africa. Which class do you think you appeal to the most? First, I know that I'm fighting for the poor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That everybody I, walks I in. By the I way, everybody in politics is fighting for the poor. Oh no, there's a difference between fighting and appeasing. Okay. Yeah. You you. How do you fight for a poor person for thirty years? Uh, doesn't make sense. Got it. Yeah, you're not fighting. You're managing the poor. Ah. Uh, yeah. Ooh. So, so, so that's, yeah. Oh, that's uh, the poor so, being managed. Mm. So what do you do? They so, manage the poor. What do they do to the middle class? Okay. So they manage the poor. Uh huh. They allow the middle class to believe that they've attained some sort of success. And then with the upper class? And then they keep the upper class rich. All right. Yeah. And the upper class just keep getting richer and richer and richer and richer. Even if you look at the numbers that uh, the upper class has been able to, to accumulate mm. in this democracy is shocking. Many of them have become billionaires okay. through the democracy. Last. So, so yeah. But not least, have you sorted out the problem with the IEC problem? So we're going to court. We believe that it's going to be sorted out. Okay. So, so yeah, we believe that uh, it's going to be resolved. And South Africans will have an opportunity to vote for us. Sure. And, and what I plead with South Africans is we, we need to realize that there's an enemy mm-hmm. at hand. This enemy is an enemy that before I came to this interview, this enemy would have spoken a language that you believe might be true, which Got is it. not true. Uh. And for us to be able to free each other, we must fight that we vote correctly. And I'm pleading with all South Africans to say, wherever you are, fight that people vote correctly. Sure. We can't vote for the ANC, DA, and EFF. No. We, we are not going to be managed. Sure. We must vote for the truth. And that comes with voting for political parties that are there that stand for the truth. And it's not only a right South Africa. No. UDM, we've got great respect for the General Obandu Volumisa. Mm-hmm. ATM. We've seen or we've heard of, of the great things that they are doing. We've got smaller political parties that are fighting for the truth. And what the enemy wants to do, right, is ensure that the small people look discredible or 
they don't look credible mm. because they don't have the money. And the big guys look credible because they give food passes and t-shirts. And immediately, they look like the Goliath that is favorable. Sure. But the truth is, it's the Davids that are the actual favorable ones. It's the ones that do not have the funding from those guys. The ones that are saying, all I've got is the truth. And that's what I speak. So I ask and I plead that let's, let's begin to educate each other. Sure. And, and, and one thing I want to be remembered for is for telling the truth. Mm. That Africa, we're the richest continent in the world. Let people remember me as the guy who said that South Africans should be the richest. The guy who's preaching for your prosperity. Not for 350, for real wealth to the people. And, and that becomes so important. So I plead for every South African to say, go out there and vote for us. Go out there and become our party agents. Help us secure our votes in each and every voting station. And I also plead for those that are able to help us financially mm. to say, wherever we go, we are asked for food parcels and T-shirts. And some places we can't speak to them without giving them that. So we plead that you donate for us. You go on our website, you donate, you give us whatever you're able to do. And those that have resources, especially the black wealthy families, have, have been very disappointed by, by the likes of Patrice Mutsipe that we've reached out to. Uh, the Gumede family that we've reached out to. There, there are many wealthy families that we've reached out to, South African families, that have turned a blind eye. They've, they've just not listened. And maybe it is their PAs or maybe it's their employees that are not getting the message out there. But to, to reach out to them and plead with them to say, support us, help us. Up until date, Arise has not received single funding from any family or wealthy group in this country. Nothing at all. We've just been funded by young people that have been giving money out of their own pockets. And that's where we get our, our, our funding from. And it's the young people that you're fighting for that are definitely funding you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. I almost want to tease you and say, shame, all they want is T-shirts and food parcels hey. so they can speak to the people. And Tina, yeah.